Okay, so support and resistance. First of all, it's important to understand the the market's natural form. Okay, and that's that's the fact that price never just goes in one direction. Okay, it never goes from point A to B without stopping off at C first of all. Okay, and if you guys look at any of your charts, you'll notice that. No matter how big the run up, even I mean if you take a look at something like the dollar yen, for example, which has literally just been up, up, up for the past for the past month or two, you know, there are it doesn't just go in one straight line, it does pull back a little bit. Now whether those pullbacks are opportunities to enter or not is something different, but it does uh, but the markets do pull back. Right? And that's what we need to understand about our trading, and that's something that will help you stay in trades as well. Okay, because if you're in a trade and the market is going for you, then it starts to pull back. That, that, that isn't necessarily a reason to get out of the trade because that's what the market does. That's naturally the way the market will move from one, from one place to another. Okay, so every trend has pullbacks, and these pullbacks are generally sort of profit-taking, uh, maybe a little bit of the opposite side of the market getting involved, but for the most part, it's, you know, it's, it's the, let's say, for example, we were in an uptrend. It's the buyers taking profits in the market, okay, so they're, they're taking a step back and they're waiting for another opportunity to get into the market at a better level, all right, so we need to understand that um, for all of our trading. Now, there, there are different types of support and resistance, so we've got the horizontal lines, they're literally the, the lines that go across the, you know, your, your screen, so from one side to the other, then you've got your diagonal trend lines. Okay, the horizontal lines, now let me just explain this a little bit first of all. The horizontal lines are the market's memory. That's the way I like to look at it anyway. So the horizontal lines are the lines where the market has come to a particular price once before in the past or maybe twice or whatever and it's, it's turned around at that point. So it's come to that, that price and it's turned around and it's gone in the opposite direction. The next time it comes back to that level, you will, the market will have a memory. The market will remember that something happened at that level in the past. And therefore, the, in all likelihood, something is, or there's something similar is going to happen at that point again. Okay, now when I say something similar, what I mean is a move away from that level. It's not necessarily that it's going to bounce off of that level. It could be that there's, there's enough behind that particular move to push the price through the, through the level and then what will happen is a lot of stops will get triggered and that kind of a thing and then we'll get a momentum move to the opposite side okay so it won't bounce it won't bounce off of it but you'll get momentum through that particular level then you've got the the diagonal trend lines okay the diagonal trend lines are things are ultimately that's projecting price into the future so whereas the horizontal lines are the market's memory the diagonal trend lines are more the um, is ultimately more the, the market projecting where the price may react at some point in the future based on a few price reference points in the past. And um, we're going to look at those as, as we get into this. How wide is the line? It doesn't matter. Um, okay. The other ones are round numbers. Okay, so round numbers are sort of psychological levels. They're not levels that you can necessarily see in the markets, although you will see price react to these levels, even if it's on a you know a shorter term time frame, and we'll show you some examples of that later, the market does react to the round numbers, so they're psychological levels, and when I say round numbers, I'm talking about things like on the euro 130, 131, 132, 133, etc, etc, as wide as the pencil, yeah, <laughs> exactly, Boyke. You've also got the daily range, now the daily range is the market's Ultimately, every different instrument has its own characteristics, and one of those characteristics are how far it can generally move on average in a day. So if you were to look at something like the euro before Christmas, it was moving on average about 60 pips a day. It was going nowhere. But what this means for you as a trader is that if you're coming up to that level, okay, so you get an opportunity to enter into the market and you're buying, uh, let's say the market's moved 50 pips for the day. Okay, or it's moved, it's moved 60 pips for the day, it's pulled back in, it's at 50 pips for the day, okay? And you get an opportunity to buy. Ultimately, depending on where your profit target is, that may not be the best pro place to buy because the market has already moved on average as far as it can move in a day. So in all likelihood, what's going to happen now is the market's either going to consolidate 
or it's going to pull back somewhat. But either way, the higher probability is not going to be that your trade pays you, but that the trade goes against you and you know you lose some money. Now that's not going to be the case every day. It's just an average. On an average day, that's as far as it goes. And as traders, we want to be playing. We want an edge, and that is something that can give us an edge. So yes, you will see days when the market roars off and smashes through the average daily range. But for the most part, you know, for 60, 70 percent of the time, all of those trades that you enter at the average daily range are going to stop you out. Okay. And finally, the other type of support and resistance is a moving average. So I use the 20, the 60, and the 100, and I like to see the price pull back to these levels and then show me some sort of price action at these levels, give me an indication that I want to be getting into the markets. Okay? Does that make sense to everybody so far? Yes, no, we're, we're going to go through each of those. This is just the beginning of the presentation, so we're going to go through each of them now in more depth. So before we get into each of them, it's important to understand the market structure. Okay, and the market structure is basically a series of, of highs and lows, of what we call swing points. So if we look at the chart here, you can see that this here, when the market comes up and then it sells off from a point, that, that is a swing point, but that's also a resistance point. It's a, it's a place on the chart where the price has come up to that, to that particular um, location, and it can't get any higher. It's found a sort of temporary ceiling at that price, and then it's fallen away. That's what's known as a resistance point or a swing high. When the market then comes down to a low and cannot get any lower than that, so it sort of finds a floor, if you like, and the price then moves off, that's what's known as a support area or a swing low. So we have our swing high, resistance, swing low support. Market moves up there again, finds an uh, area of resistance, that becomes a swing high, that also becomes an area of resistance, and this is our swing low. Now, interestingly enough, and this doesn't obviously... Not every trader is going to agree with this, but for me, even though we define a trend as being in an uptrend, a series of higher highs and higher lows, okay, and in a downtrend, a series of lower highs and lower lows. But for me, the most important point, so the most important factor to keep a trend in place in an uptrend are the swing lows. As long as we're making higher lows, I'm okay with things. In a downtrend, it's the highs. Okay, so as, low, as long as we're making lower highs in a downtrend, I'm okay, I'm okay with things. <coughs> and the reason for that is if you, think, if you think about it, you do get periods of consolidation in the market. <coughs> Excuse me. And these periods of consolidation is sort of like the price taking more of a breather than the average pullback. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a game changer. So as long as your major, your last major swing low in an uptrend is kept in place, I'm still happy to buy the market. And on the other side of the coin, as long as the most recent major, okay, I'm not talking about the minor little levels, major swing high in a downtrend is not breached, I'm still happy to sell the market. All right, so that's just my little, um, my version of what a, what a trend it is. So obviously you guys may have a different version of that, but that for me is what holds a trend in place. So support and resistance is the most basic yet effective form of technical analysis. All of the major, all of the big traders that I know, um, and we know between my brother and I, we know a few traders that trade for the banks and um, for some hedge funds and all of that kind of good stuff, and they all use support and resistance in one form or another they have support and resistance on their charts. You know, and if they don't use it directly for their trading decisions, they at least acknowledge them. So they won't trade into major levels of resistance or support. And as I said just now, support is a level where sellers find buyers. So the market's been selling off, it's been coming down to a point, and then suddenly it finds a wall of buyers, um, and it can go no further, and then the price gets pushed in an opposite direction. Resistance is the opposite. It's a level where buyers find the sellers. So the buyers have been in control, comes up to a point, and suddenly there's a wave of selling. Now, this wave of selling isn't necessarily, how do I put this? It's not necessarily the, um, the, the major bears getting involved in the markets. Okay, so if you're a buyer and you want to take some profit, what do you have to do? 
you have to sell, right? So it's not necessarily, as I said, the sellers getting involved and really pushing the price down. It could be that the buyers need to, become, need to take some profit so they become a seller to get rid of their position, right? Now, for me, the bigger time frames are more important for potential support and resistance levels. So levels on a weekly are going to be more significant than levels on an hourly chart, for example. Although, you can still take note of the levels on an hourly or a five-minute chart if that's the chart that you're trading. But you just want to make sure that you're aware of the bigger levels because you don't necessarily want to be trading into those huge levels. Does that make sense so far? Yep, they're, they're the round numbers, Jenna, the OO numbers. That's what I was talking about. We'll come to that again in a second. Yep, I'll, do, I'll bring that up on the chart once I've finished the presentation. So support and resistance levels. Price reacts to these levels, okay? So movement can be anticipated. Now, us as traders, we want to be getting into the market when we have what we foresee as being high probability trade setups. And a higher probability setup is going to be a trade taken at a location where you're anticipating, where you're, you're expecting something to happen. And that's why support and resistance level provide such amazing levels to, um, to take your entries from. Okay, now, as I said, there are ideal areas to look for entries and exits. And one very, very key concept is that previous support becomes resistance and pre previous resistance can become support. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. But it's a very, very important concept because a lot of times traders or rookie traders will look at a level and it will get breached. And they say, okay, well, the price has broken through this level, therefore it's not, it's not important anymore, it's irrelevant. That is so not true. One of my favorite trades are the trades where the price finds a level of resistance, for example, pulls away from that level, breaks through that level, and then pulls back to that level of resistance. Now that resistance level now becomes a support level, and if the markets are going to stay bullish in that particular, in this particular example, that particular level needs to stay in place. And as long as that level holds, that provides a very, very high probability setup. So please, please remember that. Previous support becomes resistance, and previous resistance can become support. So one or two things are going to happen when price approaches a support or resistance level. Okay, price will reverse. It's either going to reverse at that level or it's going to break through that level. And if it does, it's going to break through with momentum. So either way, whether you're selling the, you know, you're selling into the resistance or you're buying through it, one way or the other, you should get some sort of a, a significant move from a significant level. And this is what I mean by previous resistance becomes support and vice versa. So the market comes up, okay, so you've got the chart coming up here, and it sells away. That becomes a resistance level. We then, we then put a line in here, okay, across that resistance level, and we project it into the future. So it goes all the way along our chart. Now the price breaks through that level. The next time price is pulling back to that level, we're going to be interested Line, zone, same difference. We're going to be interested to see what price does at that level because ultimately we're expecting some sort of a reaction. Why? Because we look left on our chart and we see the last time the price was here at this level on the chart, it did something. It sold, it sold off from it. So the next time that price pulls back to the chart, we're going to be expecting it to hold because this is quite a momentum move there. We're expecting this momentum move to continue to the upside. If it continues, it needs to hold at that level, and that's exactly what's happening there, okay? So that's the previous level of resistance becomes support, and in a downturn, the previous level of support, market would break through it, pull back to it, would then become resistance. So how do, what does support and resistance look like on the charts? This is, an, this is an example of the Aussie dollar chart, daily chart between, um, in 2009, 2000, from February to September. Look at what happens here. Previous support becomes resistance. Yeah, exactly. So the market pulls up to that level. It sells off from it. It breaks through that level. Look at what happens. Exact same level there. It bounces off of the level. It then moves up, finds a level of resistance, pulls back, breaks through it, 
Okay, it finds little when it pulls back on a mo on a smaller time frame. There, finds it as support. Goes up to this point here, sells off, comes back. We have our line in there. Next time it comes back to there, we're going to be interested. Sells off again. Market then starts to come down to the downside. Look at where it finds support. That previous level of resistance there. Previous level of resistance becomes support. The market breaks through it. The market comes back to it. Take a look again. Where is the market finding support? At that previous level of resistance. You cannot make this up, guys. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. You can't make this up. This happens day in, day out in the market. So that's why it's my very, very favorite setup. I will wait for these setups all day long. Because I know in the long run, these are the setups that are going to pay you in the end, in the long run. Okay? But the other thing to remember is that we need to contextualize price. All right, so just because we see a you know, support or resistance or a trend on one time frame, it doesn't mean that that's going to hold true on the larger time frame. So you really need to make sure that you know. Fandom Ulam, you have an alarm? No, I watch it. I just keep an eye on it. Yeah, you need to contextualize price so that you, you know where, you, where you're trading. Okay. Now, what I mean by this is, let's say, for example, you feel like you're in a big uptrend on an hourly time frame and you're about to buy. You need to make sure that you're not going to be buying into a major level of resistance on, let's say, the daily time frame. Okay. So it's not evident from your hourly chart. But if you look at the daily, you can see a huge level there or a weekly chart. So you need to put price into some sort of context. And that's what I'm going to show you here. How are you going to know that the level... You don't know, Jano. You, you look for a setup at that particular level. You look for your favorite price action setup at that level. Um, and then you take the trade. Sometimes it will work out. Sometimes it won't. Okay. So let's go and take a look out and see what zooming out can do. Why do the math? Why no... Sorry, I don't understand that, Werner Mulem. Okay, so taking a look at this chart here, what do you reckon? Downtrend? Who thinks downtrend here, yes or no? I'll give you a hint. The price is starting at the top left of the chart and it finishes at the bottom right. There are too much of them, but you learn to, you learn to trade them. Yeah, it's not an uptrend, it's a downtrend there. Okay, let's look at the next chart. That same downtrend on a four hour chart. Does that look like a stronger downtrend to you? Or does it look like the market might actually be reversing? Not sure. So it's a little bit more it's a little bit more difficult to look at, right? I mean from that from that perspective it's kind of yeah, it's a pause. It's not really going anywhere. Let's see what everybody else said. No. Exactly. Now let's move on to the next chart. So that strong downtrend on the one hour chart, look at what it is on the daily. Take a look at that for a moment. That is a big time uptrend. And look at the level. If you try to sell, so let's go back a few slides a minute. If you try to sell here on this pullback over here, so we're trying to sell this pullback. Look at what you're selling into. Let's look left on the charts, guys. Move my cursor along, look left. Now look at that, a big, big structural level. So you wouldn't want to be selling there. But you wouldn't know that unless you'd zoomed out enough, until you'd, unless you'd come out to like the daily and you'd looked at it and you said, okay, that looks like a, you know, a level that could reverse. So I don't necessarily want to be taking a trade there. Look, I like that, Ray. Yeah, look left, be right. <laughs> <coughs> Exactly. So you need to take all of this into account when you're trading. You need to know where you're trading from. It's not, it's not enough just to have your favorite setup and to trade it blindly. You need to take into account what the rest of the market is doing when you're taking a trade. If you do that, you're going to put yourself in a much better position to be able to profit from the market movements. Okay? If you don't do that, yeah, you can be right. You can even make some money. But I guarantee you, you'll never be as successful, as profitable as you would be if you take these things into account here. And it all comes down to support and resistance. So how do we define the levels that we want to... 
Yes, you can view the candles for additional confirmation, definitely. So how do we identify our, our big levels of support or resistance? Well, we call them key levels. Okay, now key levels are historical levels of support and resistance you can find on a daily or a weekly chart. Yes, you can have your support and resistance on the shorter term time frames, and I trade off of them a lot. But my big levels, the levels I definitely don't want to be trading into, are going to be my key levels. They're levels where the price has reversed historically, and not just neandered around there. I'm talking about reversed in a big manner. Okay, so it hasn't just come down there and consolidated and broke through. It's come down to that level. It's reversed at that level. And then key levels, as I said here, can act as reversal points. But when they are broken, you need to expect momentum through the level. That's the first, that's the first key criteria. And your first clue is to whether you're trading a, a breakout, a true breakout or a false breakout. A true breakout will break through with momentum. A false breakout will not have very much momentum through the level. And this is what they are. Okay, you can see these big sort of wicks at the candles. Major level, it's reversed at that level. It's come up here, it's turned around. It's come down here, it's turned around. Okay, that should also be there as well. There should be a line there. Big level there, comes down to this level, turns around, reverses, reverses again. Look at that candle. Okay, these are our key levels. They're big levels of support and resistance that historically, when the market comes back to one of these levels, I'm going to have my, my eye on it. I'm either going to be trying to play the bounce through the level or some sort of moment, momentum break through the level. Okay, so sloping lines of support and resistance, trend lines, that's the other type that we look at. Now remember the horizontal lines, being these guys over here, this is the market's memory. Okay, this is what the market remembers. It's going to do something with that level. The trend lines are sort of like the market's crystal ball. This is the market projecting price into the future. Now, I said that you shouldn't really use them in isolation. I, ch I like having them on my charts, but I prefer trading them when they come in conjunction with something like a FIB level or another horizontal level. Momentum is, is the price moving very quickly through a level okay so the trend lines you shouldn't use them in, a, in isolation you need to connect the wicks do not cut through the candles for the most part now there are going to be instances on your chart when cutting through a candle is going to help you contain the rest of the price action and in those sort of circumstances it's okay but for the most part you want to try and connect the wicks now they can be upwards or downward sloping on high volume. Well, you don't really see volume in the forex markets, Van der Mullen, so it's a little bit more difficult. So this is what we have here. You've got the market moving up, pulling back to a level of, um, of support, goes away from that level, pulls back again. At this point here, with three touch points, you've got one, two, three, we then can put in a sloping line. With that sloping line, what we're then able to do is that we're able to project where the price may turn around in the future. So we can say that if the market pulls back to this level here, it would be a clue and it starts to you know, sort of slow down at this level and give you some sort of a price action reversal. It would be a clue that the price is then going to continue off up in this direction over here. Okay, so that's what a trend line is. It's, it's sort of like a... A crisp, no, two is okay. Two is not a problem, but three is just a little bit stronger. It's the market's memory. It's the market saying, okay, uh, not the market's memory, so it's the market's crystal ball saying, okay. Uh, Where I believe the market will react in the future. Okay, now to our round numbers. So the round numbers can have quite a significant psychological impact on traders, although for the most part it's more on the lower time frames than the higher time frames. Yes, of course, the big handles on the higher time frames, they're going to provide a reaction. But like the 3100, 3200, stuff like that, even on the daily time frames you may see a reaction. If the price wants to break through, it will break through it. So they're, you know, they're better to trade on the shorter term time frames. And I'll show you what happens. 
So this is a five minute chart, that's the 31 level. Look at the way price reacts with this level here. It comes down, it bounces off it. it. Comes down again, it bounces off it. It bounces off, it bounces off, it bounces, breaks through. Comes back, bounces off of it. Breaks through it, bounces off there again, plays with it, comes back to it. Okay, so this, these levels here, now let's say for example your trading strategy, I'm not saying that you should take this as a trading strategy, but let's say for example your trading strategy is to literally buy and sell with a 10, 20 pip stop loss every time the market comes down to it. With that strategy, let's see what would have happened. You've gone one to one. You would have made some money, made some money, made some money, made some money, lost money, made some money, lost money, lost money, made some money, made some, made some, made some. So even though you've got a couple of losses in there, that particular tra trading strategy, just, just literally buying and selling at that level, okay, um, you would have come out ahead of the game for that, for that time frame right there, which is what? A period of a few days. Literally on the five-minute chart, playing with the major handle there, you would have made, without any sort of a sophisticated entry technique, Excuse me. Without any sort of a sophisticated entry technique, you would have made money just literally trading the bounces off of the level with a 20 pip stop either side. 20 pip stop, 20 pip take profit. You would have made money there. Not too bad, right? Uh, what do you mean, which one? That's strange, Jenna. They should have very similar candles. So our other level is the daily range. And as I said earlier, every, every pair has its own characteristics. Okay, so every, and one of those characteristics, as I said, is its daily range. You know that the market is self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay, so if the euro's daily range is, let's say, 60, you'll know that if you're at about 60 pips for the day, you don't necessarily want to be taking trades in the direction of the trend for the day. You maybe want to start looking at fading the trend. Okay, but how do you calculate what the daily range is? Well, for me, the easiest way to do that is to apply an indicator to your chart known as the ATR, the average true range, and you, you apply that to the daily chart. And ultimately, what it does is you give it a period, I like 20, you take the last 20 days, you add all of the values together and then you divide it by 20 and that will give you the average value for the the average daily range for that particular pair does that make sense and then what you want to do is if the market starts to approach those levels very much like with the psychological level of 3100 here you need to be no just divide it um, What am I talking about here? Sorry. Um, yeah, you need to be aware of the level there because you can play those exactly the same way as you would have played this sort of a level here. Okay. That brings to, to an end the presentation. We made some good time there. So now what I want to do is I want to open up the, the, um, the room for any questions you guys might have. The average true range is the average range for a particular instrument for a particular time frame. So if you, if you apply the average true range, the ATR indicator to a daily chart, and you use 20 as your input, you're going to be calculating the average range for the last 20 days. Any other questions? Uh, from high to low, van der Meulen. Yeah, weekly, obviously the longer term time frames are always going to be the more important levels. I don't use the momentum indicator, Mr. 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 C. I use the charts and price. Fernando, even if it's got one one touch, it's still it's still valid for me. I'm still gonna watch price when it comes back to that particular level. 
yes, I use I use pivot points for my day trading. I use them a lot. It's a very very big part of it. Boho, the problem with breakouts, and the problem with any trading is that you never know whether it's going to be a true breakout or a true false breakout until after the event. So what you need to do is you need to have your rules in place. Okay, and with your rules in place, you then um, you then take the trades, and hopefully, if you've got enough of an edge, you come out ahead of the game. A pivot point is basically a mathematical formula for calculating support and resistance points in the markets. Yes, FX Boyke, I still use range bars; they're my primary entry method now. Last turn, the HR points to the high and the distance from the. No, it's just literally high to low, Van der Mullen. Literally high to low. So the lowest point to the highest point for that day. You use support, you use pivot points the same way as you'd use any other support and resistance point. Okay, guys? So it's exactly the same thing. Any pivot points, psychological levels. You look at them in the same way. You wait for price to come to those levels, and then you look for a reaction at those levels. Yes, Ahmed, I do know. I'm 100%. They, they use support and resistance levels in their trading. How can you use range bars? Um, I mean, if you... I can't really give away... You, we... How do I do this? Because we've got members that pay a lot of money for for the way that we trade them, so I can't necessarily give it away on a free webinar, but ultimately we're looking for our particular setups, our price action type setups at levels of support and resistance. The most important thing a new trader should learn before trading live is one, money management, so you don't kill yourself before you learn how to trade properly, two, support and resistance, and three, market structure. Okay, Van der Mullen, can you take it off of caps lock, please? Is that possible? I'll go to the charts once I've finished once I've finished answering the questions from other candidates here. Kimberly, a range bar is a, is a bar that's based purely on price and nothing else. Are there any other questions, guys? Okay, I'll go and bring up a, a chart or two. How do you fix your SL level? I usually place my stop loss behind the most recent swing point. Um, what is the next boot camp? When is my next boot camp? Oh, um, Alex, uh, it's interesting you say that. We were just talking about that the other day. Um, we're planning a new another boot camp for... Um, for somewhere around the first, first, first week or so of March. Are you interested in attending? How much risk in Forex per intraday? Intraday bohus, I, I risk about a half a percent of my account on any one intraday trade, but then I can take many intraday trades in a day. Okay, Alex, perfect. Drop me an email. Thank you. Is horizontal support and resistance more important? Yes, for me, Boyke, it is. For me, it's, it, it is more important. Is it, very, is it possible to become very good at reading price from a chart? How long does it take to become very good? It is very possible, Ray, um, and it really depends on the person. It, um, you can learn something every day, but if you're dedicated, you should be able to get the basic concepts after a few weeks, but it's going to take you a few months, a good few months of looking at charts and watching them every day to understand how they really sort of move.
Is there an alternative to a stop loss? Um, you could trade options, Ahmed. Or, yeah, I mean, that's the alternative to a stop loss, but I would never recommend that you trade with no stop loss whatsoever. Do I use yesterday's high low lines? As sometimes, I don't use them a whole lot, if I'm honest with you, but yeah, I do keep them in mind. How about the Fibo level? The Fibonacci levels, um, yep, I use those as well. Are all of our strategies in the ebook? No, no, they're not. All of our strategies are in the video course, the boot camp, or the private coaching. You can purchase different books of ours for different product, for different strategies, but there isn't one central place for all. In fact, the boot camp is um, also is more focused on the range bar trading. What do I think of the pivot points? I like them, Boyki. I like them. They're, they're a good filter. I like them for my day trading. I don't use them for my longer term trading at all, but for the day trading, I do like them. Do I use market profile? No, I don't. Um, I've looked at that once or twice in the past, but I've never really sat down to understand it properly. So I, c I couldn't tell you whether it's you know, a great tool or not, or whether it works or not. I, but I personally, I haven't used it. I heard a hedging system as an alternative. Well, it, not really. I mean, you could look at it as an alternative to a stop loss, but why would you not just close out the position and then sell the opposite direction? Do you see what I mean? You can get yourself in a bit of a tangle hedging if you don't understand how to do it properly. Yeah, I try, Ray. I mean, the, my brother and I differ somewhat here because my brother likes buying through the highs and selling through the lows. I personally hate it. It winds me up. And I never feel comfortable when I'm in a trade that's done that. I just feel like, I don't know, I feel like I don't have enough of an edge there. So I personally like buying at support and selling at resistance. That's my personal preference. You get your stop loss triggered often. Well, where are you putting your stop loss, Ahmed? Because perhaps you're just you're you're strangling your trade. You're not giving it enough room to to make to make you any money. Um, Pedro, I think the webinar's being recorded, but we'd have to ask FX Street for that. FX Street, is the webinar being recorded today? Yes, it is. Yes, it is, Pedro. So you'll be able to find it on the on fxstreet.com once we're finished here. Below SNR levels. Well, what sort of a time frame are you trading, Ahmed? Okay, Pedro. And if you have any questions, then feel free to drop me an email as well. Isn't buying highs and selling lows the same as overbought and oversold? But yeah, I guess you could look at it like that. But the thing is, is that you need to understand the market condition, Ray. And this is what this is actually quite key because it's only overbought and oversold. Um, how do I put this? If you're looking at overbought and oversold conditions, it doesn't really work very well in a trend because a trend is going to continue and it's going to kill you in the end if you try and trade like that. So the first thing you need to understand is you need to understand the market condition. Once you understand the market condition, you can then decide whether you want to be buying over overbought conditions or whether you want to be selling at them. Does that make sense? Ahmed, well, that's... Um, 
that's quite strange. Perhaps you're not you're not looking at where you're trading at in the markets because I tra- I put my stops behind the most recent swing points, um, and I do pretty well. Having said that, I don't take I don't take every single trade that's out there. I only take the best trades. Okay, you've got to wait for the highest probability setups. If you do that, you'll come out ahead of the game. If you don't, you will struggle. So if you try and trade everything that moves, that's a recipe recipe for disaster. Do I do, how do you defend against intentional hit stop loss? You can't really bohus, to be honest with you. You could write it, but when you say intentionally hit, if the market's going to go that way, it's going to go that way. You know, I personally don't believe in brokers. You know, I guess there are shady brokers out there. I haven't had experience. My brokers are, are fine. They don't do things to stitch me up, so I don't consider that sort of a thing. Can you do the next time a webinar more in depth about this issue? We can always see our old ones before, so we are informed. What do you mean, Van der Mulen? You're an emotional train. <laughs> we all are. Do you watch economic data releases? Yeah, I mean, I keep an eye on them. I'm a don't worry, greed and fear drives us all mad. Yes, Van der Mule, I did, do, I did do something similar to this last summer, but to be honest with you, there are only so many topics in, uh, in the trading arena. You know, for me anyway, I trade a certain type of way, and what I'm trying to do is teach you guys and new people how I trade. I, can't, I would never dream of teaching something or showing you guys something that I don't do myself. Pedro, what do you, what, support and resistance, you can find a whole heap of information out there on the internet. In fact, we've got a little section on our website, traderscorner-online.com. Um, if you go to learn to trade, there's a few, few articles that we wrote there, and one of them's on trading support and resistance. Do you try and enter before the momentum candle or wait for a little... Personally, Ray, I'm the type of person I like to um, I like to trade. Hold on, what was that? Sorry, Boyki, which question was that? Did I miss one? Is it possible to retype? Do you try and enter on the momentum? I like to wait for com- confirmation. I personally, I don't like. Um, how do I put this? I don't like trying to predict what's going to happen. I prefer to react. So I have my rules in place and I react if something happens. So if you if X happens I will do Y. That's sort of the way that I trade. What are my rules for managing positions in one instrument? I wait for confirmation. Yes. What do you mean what are my rules? Do I watch for Oh Boyke, yes, I, I answered that. I do watch for economic data releases and news. Uh, more so on the shorter term time frames than on the longer term ones. On the longer term ones, to be honest, I don't take that, pay that much attention to them at all. Um, obviously, I wouldn't take a punt going into non-farms or an FOMC meeting or something like that. But generally speaking, um, yeah, I pay attention to them on the shorter term time frames and not so much on the longer term time frames. Ahmed, that, that's perfectly fine, and that, that's up to you if you don't believe it. Um, I mean, they do, we do, but it's, it's, of course it's up to you to believe what you like. But then you, you would need to ask yourself the question, if you don't believe you can make money trading, then why would you be here on this, on this webinar to start with? Ray, typically speaking, I wait for the market to move sort of at least... 50 to 100 percent of you know sort of one to one before I move my stop to break even. I don't like strangling my trades. Whenever I strangle my trades, the market comes back, hits me at, at break even, and then continues in my direction. And to be honest with you, that winds me up more than most things. So I prefer just to not put myself in that position.
<laughs> Fair enough. Well, I can tell you, you've got much better odds in the FX markets than you do playing the lottery. But that's a good one. I like that. So no, Ahmed, I, I can guarantee you, you can make money trading these markets. It's not easy, but you can do it. Well, there you go. I mean, Alex makes on average 50 pips a day. Alex, are you trading our systems with that? Or are you trading your own version? Or how are you doing that? Very nice. Yeah, range bars are the way to go. Yes, indeed. It's uh, and that's uh, that's actually a very good point, guys. You know, FX is a business, and you need to treat it like that. Once you start to treat FX as a business, then you will start to, uh, you will start to make the transition. As long as you start, you keep playing it like it's some sort of entertainment. It's going to cost you money. My rules for exit are literally be uh, below the swing point, or I watch price action for the momentum starting to fade. Um, or at the sort of next resistance or support point. We don't have a live trade room as of yet, Van der Mulen. Um, a lot of people have been asking that for us for a good few months now, and it is something we're going to look to put into place, um, like 100% we're now going to put this into place in the next coming months. But I need to make you guys aware that it's not going to be a signal service. We're not regulated to give signals, um, so it's not going to be take a trade here, do this, do that. It will more be talking about the markets. We will show you the trades that we take. Um, but for the most part, I don't think we will be able to show you the trades that we're taking as we take them. Once we're in them, we can let you know that we're in them. But we can't do it before because I guess that would be seen as some sort of a signal. So if that sort of thing of is, is of interest to you, then perfect. If not, then I'm sorry we don't do that sort of a service. Yes, I'm in England. What technique do I use to allow a profitable trade to run? I use my brother. <laughs> we, we have very, very different trading styles. I'm more of a swing trader. So I'll take, you know, you know, roughly sort of like a one or a two to one out of the trade, be happy with it, wait for the next trade to come. Um, but my brother is someone who will hold a trade forever. So I use, he's my primary uh, trading stop technique. Are there any other questions, guys? Because I think we've overrun a little bit. So I'm not sure if anybody's due one after us. So what, what, what topic would you guys like for the next webinar? Thank you, guys. Okay, Van der Mulen, but when you say more in depth, what do you what do you mean? My secrets. <laughs> I'll tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. Can I lend you some money to join your course? I can't lend you the money to join the course, but I'll tell you what, Ray, if you send me an email, we'll see what we can hook up. Okay, longer term trades, real time trades, trading psychology. Email is stop hunt zone. <laughs> yeah. In fact, what will what will probably do? Because I know some of you guys 
you probably don't have the money to spend on things. As I said, we're going to be doing a boot camp up in March, where we'll go through some of our trading systems. If you are interested, maybe I'll speak to my brother, because I need to, obviously, this just because you were so blunt and upfront and asked for me to lend you some money. But um, <coughs> I like it. So maybe what we'll do is we'll give like uh, one or two places away to our boot camp that we're going to be holding in March. For free, obviously. Trade what you see, trade your edge. Love it, Bohus. Exactly that. Okay, so we'll look at, we'll go in support and resistance in more depth. We'll look at some entry techniques and that kind of stuff in the next webinar then, yeah? Does that sound like a plan? The email is above. I've just typed it above. Thank you very much, FX Street. Thank you for having me, as always. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all in, in February.